We're now joined by former Baylor All-American and New York Liberty Guard, one of the great friends of this show, Dee Dee Richards on Sikkim 365 Radio. And no, what people don't know is before we started, I mean, you were you were traumatized that you just got finished with practice and you don't feel like, you know, that you don't feel like you're presentable. There's never a time you're not presentable. See, I really appreciate that. You know, everybody needs to pick me up because I definitely know this is not presentable. <laughs> no, and, and you've got the hair, right? I, I, you know, that first style when you first came to Baylor and, you know, it, it's just – you're adorable. We appreciate your time. Thanks for uh, what's going on with you, and 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 also thanks for joining us. How much has the NBA surprised the WNBA? How much has it surprised you? The level or anything about it? Um, it, the strength has definitely hit me sideways, all upside the face. Um, there, the, the strength is very different. The speed's different. The plays are different. And I think I've come to a program that is the complete opposite of what. Coach Mulkey would ever want to run. So that's all hitting me all at once. Um, and I think I'm, you know, I'm adjusting to it well. It's taking me some time, but I'm trying to adjust to it. And I'm staying in the gym as much as I can. Is the wear and tear any different uh, than what you did when you played nearly 40 games in college? Yes. Um, even me being um, someone that doesn't play as many minutes here, um, I can still feel the craziness of playing a game back to back or four games and six days, you know, little things like that. Um, but honestly, 40 games in college is way easier than these back-to-back -back games that we've been playing because you get, you play like what every Monday and Friday or mm -hmm. Tuesday and Sunday, you know, we have so much time to prepare for a different team and to recover. And here it's kind of like you play a game, you sit out for a day and then you practice that day and then you play the next day. So it's very different. And it's a quick turnaround. Well, you, you mentioned the playing time, and obviously you've been a star since your days near Houston in high school and what you did at Baylor. Has it taken an adjustment for you to kind of understand there's some patience involved here? Um, no, nothing I coached Mokey again and teach me before because my freshman year I didn't play either. So I feel like I'm taking it just as like my freshman year at Baylor, um, taking the time to kind of get to know everything. I'm, I'm happy I'm on a team that is able to kind of teach me before I'm just thrown into the wolves, you know, like most teams. So I'm taking it. Um, I'm taking baby steps, um, but I'm getting better. You guys are in a grind right now, and you're, you're kind of scratching and clawing to get yourself in position to make sure you're in the playoffs. What's the discussion about that among the team? Um, I mean, literally just going in every day and attacking every game like it's our last. I think that's our biggest turnaround with this team. But literally just every team in the league is different. But every team in the league wants to get the same position as us. So you got, you can't take any games off um, up here. Yeah, and you're about halfway through the schedule. And, and obviously you continue went on with uh, – you had a really good start, but things have kind of – they've been a little bit more of a struggle. Uh, how frustrating is it for you because you probably lost more games this year than you did in your entire career at Baylor? Yeah, I was definitely just saying that to one of my teammates. I'm like, y'all – this is the most games I've lost, like, in my career at Baylor. And it's just, um, literally, it, it hit me, like, after our first loss, we got beat by, I want to say, 30. And I was just like, ew, like, this isn't, <laughs> I can't do this. And I wanted to cry or whatever. And they're like, Didi, no, we, we literally play tomorrow. So I think that's the difference between college and now. You can't really dwell on a loss. You can't take one whole practice for a coach to go off when you're on a loss because you're literally playing the next day. You mentioned that there were a couple of places in particular that you would probably fit in the best because of you, your personality, expressions, and all the things that you know that you represent and, and who you are as a person. And New York was obviously one of them. Has it been all you thought it would be? Um, yes. It's literally exactly what I expected. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a lot going on over here. That's like okay. But, no, literally it's – everything I expected and more. Um, New York is me. So, so fast paced, so bubbly. It's like you, everything is going on. It's bright, you know? So I'm so happy I'm here. You know, you, uh, you mentioned this and obviously it's been a while since the draft and then on Nike Jordan brand, all of that, that you got involved with. What did that mean to you? I'm not a surprise. I'm not, no one could have been surprised that you were a part of that, but what did that mean to you that they did reach out to you? Um, it was a dream. I think everybody in this level, I think you get to a point where you're kind of dreaming for something and 
one of my dreams was to be a Nike athlete or to be a Jordan athlete, but definitely to be a Nike athlete. And just to be able to say that I am one is, is humbling and I'm, I'm beyond grateful for it. And I hope that I can I won't let them down. What about the clothing line that I see you modeling all the time on Twitter? You're showing up at a game or wherever you might be. How much input do you have with that? I have, I'm telling you, that's all me, you know? <laughs> no, but it's literally, I, I don't know. I think that's my favorite part. Don't tell my coach I said that, but that's my favorite part of game days is literally putting on clothes and walking in the tunnel and taking pictures because, like, it's the closest thing to modeling that I can get to right now. <laughs> well, it, that's that's no different than one day that la after your career that we hope is a long, long time that you're going to go down one of those runways, right? Oh, I'm hoping. Fingers crossed, you guys. Fingers crossed. Hopefully sooner rather than later. I saw you uh, the other day. I don't know. Maybe even yesterday. You said, I hate hearing no. What do you mean by that? Like when I ask for food or something, please give me the food, you know? So <laughs> I, I don't know. I went through something where I wanted some pizza and I asked someone to order me some pizza and I told them no. And I was like, what like what does that mean so i don't know it had been a while since that person had told me no so i think that's why it kind of threw me off but i'm okay now i'm gonna get better and i'm gonna be more understanding to that weird word that people use yeah that no <laughs> that the, the four letter word of no uh to dd richard no. D, what, what was the expression because you're a very expression person you've got unbelievable expressions what was your expression when they said that to you i think i pouted and I was just like, I'm going to call you back. And they were like, what? <laughs> I said, I'm going to call you back. They're like, for what? Where are you going? I said, I, I don't know. I just need some time. But like, I really needed a break because you told me no. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, you, you got you to gotta make sure you're in control of that. Now, you mentioned earlier the WNBA, the style that you play with New York is different than what you played at Baylor with Coach Mulkey. You know that Nikki Collin from Atlanta is now with Baylor. And she's going to try to help maybe change up a lot of things. It, it, whether there's the same success remains to be seen. How much do you think that might, for Nalissa or Queen or others, maybe go, wow, this is, uh, this is a lot of fun, do you think? I think Liz is definitely going to thrive off of this type of offense. So I'm sure Nikki's going to run this type of offense, which is kind of like a four-out deal. Everyone shoots threes, fire it out kind of thing. Um, I think Liz is going to thrive, but I also feel like everyone in college need. I'm not going to say they need to run this, but when you come to the league, it's, it's going to be a big difference unless you get drafted to um, Vegas where they do two posts or Indiana where they have two posts. Other than that, it's basically four out, one in, and the one in is, isn't really in. So I think it's going to be good for Liz to get some exposure to that because she's definitely going high in the draft. I saw you hit a three early on this season, and it made me go back to your stats at Baylor. You never, I think you may have taken one, and I think one, one three-point shot in your four years at Baylor. Not even one when you guys were in a blowout or whatever. What was that like? How much did that make you feel when you drained, drained that three? Um, <laughs> I was super excited. I really was. I was like, I felt like a, a monkey had got like lifted off my back, so to say. Um, but I'm definitely in the gym a lot. Dustin is real, really good at, you know, keeping me level-headed and, you know, fixing my shot and being able to be here whenever I call him because we work out 24-7. So I'm just thankful for Dustin and um, the New York staff for kind of being patient with me through well, all this. Yeah, and, and uh, by the way, when you took a three, you took that one three, were you just scared to ever take another one because of the glare? Um, <laughs> I'm, I don't know. I'm still, <laughs> it's still a work in progress for sure. Didi, your brother, I think DJ, right? He's going, is he going to Mount Verde Academy? Yes, he is. What was that? What does that make you feel? How proud were you when, when he was able? That's a big-time basketball place. I, you know, I'm happy for him. It was a hard decision for him because he – I feel like people have this negative connotation in their mind when they think of JUCOs or academies, and I was just happy that he made the decision for himself to, you know, take a year to develop because – He's, he's going to be a good player, and he needs a year to kind of get, get people to get their hands on him, um, develop him into the point guard, shooting guard, whatever he is, because he's he's so tall. Like, the, no one knows, knows where to put him. So um, just to get developed into the player that he's going to be, and I think, like, the sky's the limit for him. How much did you go one-on-one -on -one with him uh, out in the yard or, or out in the uh, courtyard or wherever you guys might have been playing the game out in the driveway or just at a gym or a, somewhere around the corner from where you live? all the time and i stopped playing him once he beat me one time 
That was it. <laughs> so then you said him, you, wait a minute, you then told him no, right? Oh, yeah. I was like, no, nah, I'm cool. Like, but you can rebound for me. Like, I don't got to play you, but you can rebound. <laughs> Dee, do you realize still to this day how popular you were at Baylor and, and how much the fans loved what you brought to the table and in your personality, but also the fact that you were an incredible player for them? Man, yes. I, I miss them. I do. But I'm happy that they're following me here. I've been seeing a lot of Baylor jerseys in the game, so I'm just happy they supported me um, through everything. Just a couple of more questions. You know now that college athletes have a name, image, and likeness ability uh, to make money with appearances, autograph sessions, or whatever. Businesses can be now involved with student athletes. That was something that just couldn't happen when you were there. How much do you think you could have taken advantage of that opportunity to be Dee Dee Richards with that type of opportunity? I am sick, but I'm happy <laughs> for everybody else. <laughs> I am so sick that I couldn't, you know, I felt, I'm so happy that they can, they're coming to the league with, you know, money in their pockets or deals already in their back pocket kind of thing, because I kind of got up here and I kind of like don't know where to start, but I love that they're getting kind of an intro to everything. So that's so fun, but I definitely feel like I could have capitalized on a lot of things back in college. You are uh, going to play after the season's over. You have something that might be working in Europe, but your thoughts ab about that is that is that a that's a pretty long stretch from the season to the WNBA and then Europe. Yeah, I'm excited to go to Italy. I think every, I mean clearly we're not making any money in the league, so you kind of have to go. Um, but I'm happy I'm in a place like Italy where it's beautiful and I it's, I can again go shopping and probably model find something out there. So I think all doors are kind of you know, leading me to the same place. I'm grateful to take advantage of them. You were a finalist again for the inspiration award recently for collegiate athletes. And what is, I don't, I hope this question doesn't sound wrong, but don't you want to be able to just be Dee Dee Richards? And I know the moment and we understand the story about last year, but have you ever gotten kind of worn out with that story being told over and over again? Um, a little bit. I mean, not, not that I, I'm grateful um, for everything that I've gone through and the people that kind of been with me throughout the whole situation. But I mean, it gets to a point where at the end of the day, I don't really want to remember the things that kind of happen. It's almost kind of traumatizing. And um, but I'm happy you know, to talk about it. I'm real open about it. So I think that's on me. If I'm OK with talking about it, then it, yes, it's going to keep me. It's going to keep popping up. But am I tired of talking about it? Let's have it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did it mean, though, for you to be a part of that, at least a finalist for that award? Oh, it's, you know, it's amazing. I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to touch the people that I touch and inspire the people I inspire. Um, and I just want to continue to do that with like my entire life. So if I can inspire someone with that story, then yeah, I'll tell it a million times more. Okay. Give uh, the Baylor fans who will be watching upon among WNBA fans, give them, give them that Dee Dee Richards flair right now. I don't have it. <laughs> <You know. laughs> no, I, I have not. Nothing for them right now. I wish I had my hair so I could just, you know, pose or something. Well, there you go. But, uh, yeah, you did it anyway. It. You did it anyway. You 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 did it. You're you're a rock star. We appreciate it. Didi, congratulations on how you've uh, handled the first half of your first year. Good luck with it. We'll be in touch again soon. And thank you to Brian Flannery and also Alicia Howard for setting this up with the New York Liberty. Thanks, Didi. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. Absolutely. That's Didi Richards, New York Liberty, former Baylor All American on Sikkim 365 Radio.